All right, uh, we promised to, to bring you this conversation earlier. Let's go to this now as the country battles at stage six rolling blackouts. The United Democratic Movement is calling on National Assembly Speaker Nosivuya Mapisa Ngagula to convene an urgent sitting of the Assembly to debate South Africa's rolling blackouts. Now, Parliament is in recess and is scheduled to resume only in August. Uh, and, of course, uh, the UDM says this needs to change. And uh, let's then have a conversation with uh, the UDM Deputy President uh, Chief, as well as the Chief Whip Nabayum Zekwankwa, who is going to be joining us um, for this uh, particular conversation. And remember, of course, uh, the country uh, is now in stage six. And today we saw it uh, being pushed up to 2 p.m., um, you know, instead of uh, the four o'clock that we were expecting. And of course, this goes until midnight and then it will then be downgraded. But of course, we are expecting to see more of it um, when it comes to tomorrow. So certainly a lot of concern, even the minister um, saying that in an earlier this week when it comes to that briefing, saying that there is, of course, um, you know, a concern around the intimidation of the workers that want to return to work. But the unions are saying that uh, for them, they want proof and they simply um, need to be convinced a lot more to say that it is the striking workers who are behind this. So quite a lot of developments are unfolding around Eskom. And I do understand that we have um, Udadunkwang with us uh, this afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're not in the country, so it's been a bit of a struggle. Um, let's start then with, uh, you know, your call to have the House come back early from recess in order to have this debate. Tell us more about it. The, the need for this call to be made was necessitated by the fact that uh, ESCOM and energy issues in the country are a major crisis. Wherever you go during this recess period, People express a concern about it. So the feeling was because of the negative impact and effect it has on the economy and people's individual lives in general, and that cost it imposes on them on a daily basis, there is a need for parliament, for politicians not to pretend to be pseudo-analysts where they sit back and twiddle their thumbs and seem to be doing very little to nothing about this challenge that parliament be reconvened back so that we have an, a, a, an important debate on this question. But not only that, that even the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises is, is instructed to summon ESCOM to appear before it so that uh, members of the executive of ESCOM can be held to account, can be asked all the relevant questions after we've had the debate, and then we can develop a plan for the future. Because what is missing at times with the debates is that you have a debate in the National Assembly, but at times those debates in the National Assembly do not necessarily inform the work of portfolio committees, which are the engine room of parliament. So that's why we're saying it needs to be a dual-pronged approach where you take the debate, but at the same time at the portfolio committee level, something serious needs to be done. So that we are able to say, if we're not able to resolve the problem, say in a month or so, how long is it going to take for us to be able to resolve it for the medium to the long term? And I want to state something I said elsewhere. Yes. That whether we like it or not, uh, I know that Brian Mulefe is implicated in the state mm -hmm. capture, but whether we like it or not, he was able to account fully about their maintenance program over periods. He was able to, to some extent, deal with the load shedding issue. So if we need to find solutions to these problems, maybe we need to go back to some of the success stories and some of the things that we might have done well in the recent future, in the recent past, and even to other people who were able to manage the entity before. But people like the executive management of ESCOM must be held to account, including the minister to which ESCOM, the minister to which uh, ESCOM accounts public enterprises, Robin Godin. The president this afternoon was speaking to a colleague of ours, Samgele Masewe, and he says that he's being briefed about what is happening at ESCOM. And, of course, he mentions that there's a myriad of other issues, including the structural defects that we've been hearing about over time when it comes to the design of some of these power, uh, power stations. At the same time, the minister comes out to say that, um, you know, they're having difficulties because some of the workers who want to return to work are being intimidated by striking workers. So quite a lot is being put when when it comes to the blame here about of, of why we are finding ourselves in this particular position do you think the handling of this by those in charge has been the correct one it has been extremely poor even if the, you experience industrial action as a company naturally what you do is to put contingency measures in place the committee meeting in parliament or having ESCOM to account before the committee in parliament would enable us not only to 
have an interaction with ESCOM, with this, talk to the to ESCOM, talk to the minister, but also talk to the workers because we always do that when we, we are dealing and interacting with SOEs. We always interact with all the relevant stakeholders. We are not able to do that now. As a result, we are getting information in a piecemeal fashion. But at the same time, we have had uh, many, many excuses about uh, the defects in some of the, uh, some of the units at ESCOM but we have not employed the executive. Government did not employ the executive so that the executive management is ESCOM so that they can keep on spewing the same excuses they've told us for many years. You employ people and you say, here's the problem. Give us the long-term turnaround strategy. Are you able to implement it? What are the challenges? What kind of support do you need? If we give you support and you can't deliver, we remove you and get people who can do the job. It's as simple as that. If the minister is also not doing it, playing his part in ensuring that the SOEs that report to him and that fall under his mandate are not doing their jobs properly, he must be fired. There are no and holy cows here or untouchables. Unfortunately, we're almost out of time. I would have liked to you know, really ask you a bit more on uh, even your earlier comments about uh, Brian Mulefe. But let's go to another conversation before we run out of time. The Democratic Alliance has written to um, the Speaker of the National Assembly, and it says that it wants an ad hoc committee to investigate the Farmgate um, incident. Of course, you and the ATM were not successful to win your bid to try and get Parliament to, to hold the president to account here. You think the Democratic Alliance may be successful this time around? Well, yes, the Democratic Alliance is using one of the many mechanisms available to us uh, with respect to trying to deal with this matter and the allegations against the president. And of course, would support such an initiative. What we're in favor of, whether you do it via the Section 89 of the Constitution or Section 102 of the Constitution or via an ad hoc committee, what we want is that there must be proper accountability of what happened there must be an investigation into what happened if you look at the letter of the uh, udm which was sent to the speaker by the general it also says you need to have a parliamentary process to do an investigation so you can't do an investigation without putting a committee in place to do the investigation on behalf of the house itself because the house is made up of 490 mps and therefore those 490 mps can't do an investigation on their own. so would we'll definitely support that initiative all right. Thank you so much uh, for your time this afternoon. Let's see then um, how the speaker responds to your letter and hopefully we'll uh, be able to speak some more on this. Uh, that was the UDM's Deputy President and uh, Chief Whip Ngabayum Zekwanko.